Welcome back to the Crochet Kratos with my friends over at Yarnspatients.com. It is a sniffle station. It is our Christmas puzzle. We are doing these three items in this particular series. This is actually video number one as we get ourselves started. So I'm going to be covering all of the box layer today. Whether it's the Santa, the reindeer or the elf. The, the Santa and the reindeer are sharing the same information. The reindeer is slightly different because it doesn't have an outfit underneath. It's just a collar and it goes back down uh, underneath just like you see. And it's completely customized as we're going. So uh, what we're going to do today is that we're going to get ourselves established. Now you should know the designer for this. Michelle Moore is a very very tight crocheter. So her attention is 14 half double crochets by 12 rows. Now it suggests here that there's a five millimeter hook right here. I used that and my stuff was way too big and I know that she's very tight. So my five millimeter became a four millimeter which is a size G and this four here will probably become a three millimeter for me. So you'll know instantly on the top of the hat. We'll talk about it when we get there um, where you should be with the sizes. So I started with the five and then I had to rip out because I knew that it was gonna be too big and I'll show you tips on that. So we're going to uh, start and you're just going to use some spare yarn or yarn that you have. You can decide if you're gonna do all of them or just a portion of one or you can mix and match the pieces and this is what we have. So we're gonna start off with the tissue box and then we're going to make like a little hat for this and then uh, rim it then with some fluffing and then keep on working its way down. So when you're looking at this photo the top of the hat is down here and you're crocheting it up. So we can actually completely customize. So what's gonna happen in this video today is that I'm gonna give you a summary of stuff that's happening. So for me I only went to uh, the 13th row. I stopped because that was the size of my box and then I moved on in the piece. So you can be able to customize yourself to be able to do that as well and we'll be looking for further tips down the road. So without further ado all of the hats or sorry all of the boxes start off in the same way. So grab your five millimeter or whatever hook size that matches the tension. For me it's gonna be a four millimeter and we're gonna begin with the color red starting at the top of the box. The box for me is approximately nine inches just like this and then it's a four and a half and then it's about four and a quarter. So just roughly get there. You can customize for yourself if you wish and then just leave this off to the side. You don't have to open it uh, right away and what we are looking for is that we're looking for the top peak. So if this is facing forward. So if I just back you out a little bit here. So when you're pulling the tissues it'll be from the forward here. This will be the top and then you're gonna work your way down. Even though it's not completely square at the top uh, we are going to be able to customize and we'll be talking about that as we get it. So you might wanna use one that's not open just as a, a sampler and then maybe if you're gonna gift it to some you might want to leave it closed then the, they can slide it off or pull out the tissue. You determine what you would like to do. Let's grab our yarn now and let's be So let's begin. We're going to create a top of the box here and this is what's going to happen is that when then we're going to add the face and then the neckline and then the base outfit. So this will be a one piece unit. Now I like to crochet in assembly line format. So I like to make all of them at the same time. So I'm actually making the third one and then I'm gonna be showing you how to do the face work on the way down and then I will be able to catch up. And so I find with myself I don't have to memorize the pattern so much when I do it as an assembly line. So if you're making these for grandkids or whatever um, it's easier if you just do it like an assembly line. Let's grab our crochet hook now and we are going to chain a total of 17. So let's do that. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Once you have 17 done you're gonna go second chain from the hook which is odd but it's gonna be nice and tight. So second chain and you're going to half double crochet. And you're gonna half double crochet in each of the chains going all the way across. This is officially row number one and meet me at the end of your chain in just a moment. Now I've officially just half double crocheted myself all the way across. So grab the top of your box. Here's the forward of it. So let's just crochet backward. So we're just gonna go to the back. Lay it over the top and you see that it's pretty much the same width across. Stay with that and now continue. So let's go into row number two. So you're just gonna turn your work. So she's su suggesting for us to go to row 17. I would customize. I only went to 13 before. So just chain up only one and in the same stitch you're coming out of half double crochet and this will make a nice good edge to work with. So whenever you're going back and forth just chain one and then half double crochet in each stitch. So there should be a total count of 16 stitches across. So I'll meet you at the end of this row and we'll talk about that and then we'll carry on in this tutorial. So I'll have to do this off camera for a bit. 
Make sure you go all the way to the very last one and then you're going to turn your work to this and then start again. So chain only one and then half double crochet. So what I want you to do is that I want you either to go to and finish up to row number 14 or just measure it to the top of the box and it should be the shape of the top of the box uh, when you get there. Okay, so in this case it'll probably be more of a little bit of a rectangle for me because my box is just slightly askew that way. So I will meet you back here and we will get to the top of the box and then we'll show you what to do next. So either do to row 14 or customize your choice and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So now I'm back and I have 13 rows completed instead of 14. So customize it. So once we have this done and you're satisfied with it so it should cover the outside we're ready then to move on. So ignore any rows after that until we start the next portion which we're going to circle the whole thing with single crochet. Now the trick to this is that we know that the starting right here and the ending here with 16 stitches. So we have to equally space out 14 stitches on the side in order to get it to come into a close. So let's grab a project and let's begin the next round and this is technically round number 15 then. So I'm jumping to round number 15 next. So starting in row 15 you're just gonna chain up one and you're going to single crochet yourself all the way across and then when you get to the last stitch you're just gonna turn the corner. So you're not adding on any stitches because you want it to immediately collapse into a square um, corner so that it will fall down this, the side of the project. So when you get to the other side just roughly space out 14 stitches. Okay, so just coming along the side. Now this will be covered underneath so you don't, you can be accurate but you don't have to be crazy accurate. So just start counting and say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and four, and fourteen is the last. So then turning immediately and going into the first stitch. Now the rest of the box is not dependent on this number. That's the nice thing about it is that you could just go all the way down then. So just continually go around so there's 16 across this and then equally space another 14 on the other side and I'll meet you back uh, there in just a moment. Do not fasten off. When you get all the way around I just did 14 down this one equally spaced and then I'm just gonna slip stitch it to the very beginning one that we had started with. So next round, round number 16 is that we want to in the back loop only half double crochet around. So when you start with these half double crochets start with the chain one first. It keeps it tight and then starting in the very first one in the back loop only. So just stay if you're new to crochet the first loop is the front. The second is the back loop and together they equal a stitch. So staying on the back loop this will naturally bend the material. So just follow it all the way around. There's nothing to do in the corners and so this will be like a cylinder going all the way around. So back loop half double crochet all the way around. I'll see you at the end of round number 15. Sorry round number 6. I'll see you at the end of round number 16. When you get all the way around on number 16 you're just going to slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet. Now's the time and Michelle's suggesting this as well. Grab up that box and let's just make sure that this fits. So if this is wrong you're going to know right now before you go any further. So just take out the hook and just slip it on over. You wanna be a little comfortable because you're gonna have to slide this in and out like when you change over the boxes, right? So you want a little bit of tension but you don't want it crazy that you're having to rip it in order to get it. So there it is. It's sitting See, I can turn it upside down. It's good. So we're now going to move on to the next two rounds of just straight half double crochet around. So let's just continue to do that. So let's do round number 17 and 18. You, you can do it. So just chain up one and in the regular stitch now just half double crochet yourself all the way around. When you get around just uh, slip stitch again, chain one and half double crochet again. So please do rounds number 17 and 18 now and then the equation will change once again. I'll see you at the end of those two rounds. And I have 17 and 18 done and now I'm going to fasten off this. So you can be relatively easy and carefree about it. This will tuck up underneath the project anyway. But you can use a tapestry needle if you wish to be able to hide in the yarns. I'm gonna stay within the outside here. 
We don't wanna mess with that too much because we're gonna have to access that again in the future. So let me just uh, quickly demonstrate. If you're going to use a tapestry needle at any point, just feed it onto the tapestry needle. Stay to the inside and then just glide it up under some stitches at least three times back and forth. And therefore you can safely then cut that out and not have to worry about it ever again. So we're gonna start with some white fluffy yarn. You'll be amazed how the next round will change. And then we're going to then add skin tone after that and you can make any skin tone you wish. So let's uh, just start with the fluffy yarn. You're gonna need the fluffy and a white regular yarn. So let's talk about that next. So the white fluffy yarn is added and we're going to be working on the wrong side Michelle says. And so what we're going to do then is that we have to just pay attention to how we're joining it. So we're going on the back loop of looking at it. So when we go to crochet we're gonna crochet this side. Usually what we do is we crochet like this and then we go in the opposite. In this case we wanna go this way. And so we're gonna do that next. So we're going to start and we're going to layer a Bernat Pip Squeak and just a Bernat Super Value. It could be any value yarn. But you're gonna use them like they're one so they look like they belong and they're also the same shade. So let's just create a slip knot with those so that they're together. And we're going to use the same size hook for that. So what I would do is recommend that you start midway. So if this is considered the back, we know that this is front and back. So I'm just gonna go on the back loop only. So I'm just going to come here and I'm going to join it. This stuff's really easy to hide mistakes if you make anything. So you're just going to join it and then chain two going around both strands and then in the same back loop you're going to double crochet. So what I want you to do at this point, I think I'm grabbing onto a straggler when I'm doing that. So what I want to do is that I want to double crochet in the back loop going around Again, if you make a mistake, it's good, really easy to hide. So going into the next back loop, just double crochet. And that's all you have to do is just one layer of double crochet in the back loop. Once you have covered enough of the starting strands, you can let that fall out. You can deal with that later and then continue the journey. So go all the way around, double crochet and I'll see you back here in just a moment. This is round number 19. When you get all the way around, you're just going to slip stitch just into the fluff somewhere. You can use your fingers and actually find the stitch if you really wanted to. And then you're just going to just trim off this yarn just long enough so that you can get it through a tapestry needle to again hide it in. We're gonna start off with our skin tone colors whether it is the deer or the Santa or the Alves. You can do any skin tones you wish. You know just because we have the reindeer, the Santa and the Alves doesn't mean that's the only thing you can create with this. Like you can create like aliens and you know why not a Christmas alien right? So you can do a lot of cool things. So choose the tone that is going to match your, de your desires and then we're going to pick up in just a moment and I'm going to carry on. So for myself I like to assembly line it so I have all three of the tops now done. So when I'm going to work on this then the next portion I would do all the rest at the same time as well. So let's uh, begin and we're gonna move on to officially round number 20 but just leave it as is because you're going to use the wrong side once again. So let's begin. We're moving on to officially round number 20 and we're going to use the same round that we just used this before. So we were using the back loops and now we're going to use the front loops. Again I would start and stop right where you probably started before. So just grabbing the loop that is left. It's in the front side and you want to join it. So just join. A any skin color will do. I just happen to choose this one and then chain one. In the same one you want to half double crochet staying in the, that only loop that's left. And by doing this what you're doing in the future is that we're creating a line in the future that you will be able to attach. Do you see this line here? It's the second one. This is where the hair if you're doing the elf will attach to. Even if you're not doing the elf with hair or anything with hair that's, uh, that's okay. It's just still a good place to attach. So let's uh, go all the way around half double crochet and I'll meet you back here in just a moment. When you come all the way around you're just going to slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet and you're still looking at the, the wrong side so I want you now to turn the project and flip it. So this uh, brim here has actually been flipped up but once uh, you get going then you're gonna flip it back down and it will cover over top of this piece here. Let's move on to rows number, or rounds number 21 and 27 but we need to talk about that before you do that because you are going to customize. So let's put your hat back on or the, the top piece 
and we're gonna do that. So this brim here has been folded up just so that you can access it but once you get going on this later you're gonna flip that back down. So you're just gonna boom like that. So your goal is, is now to use this, the skin tone regardless of what skin tone you have and go approximately 50%. It's, she's suggesting it's seven rows but what I want you to do and she also suggests it too is that it's gonna be right, I'm just gonna mark my box, it's gonna be right about here. And so what I want to do is now crochet, half double crochet until I get close to that spot and then that's where the tissues are going to come out later and the nose will actually be right up here somewhere. So let's begin to do rows, rounds number 21 to 27. Now rounds number 21 to 27 or halfway uh, for the box you're just gonna half double crochet around. So when you get all the way around just half double crochet, sorry slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet, chain up one and then half double crochet in the first and continue. So please go around until you're about 50% of the box and or the suggestion that Michelle's saying. And I'll see you back here in a moment when it's 50% done. So behind the scenes I've been working on this and actually the middle here is what we're going to be concentrating on next. So the opening comes out. So it's not until after this section here and here is that it changes. So for the reindeer it actually is slightly different and you're doing a collar which is just a change of color for three rounds and then down. So essentially you have to get yourself all the way to the base. So once we get the fun stuff done then you just crochet and when it sits flat it should sit flat so it's not exposing the box but just resting and so that's our goal. So at this point here with the Santa and any of these what we have to do is put it on and make sure it's at the halfway mark. Remember that I marked it so it was around the two uh, the zero there. So it's sitting nice and flat. So I wanna locate the middle uh, eight stitches and it's just a matter of eyeing it out. So I used actually the perforation here to be able to kind of determine that. So I just mark one. So I'm just gonna mark one and then just count it and then see if it looks right. It's no, there's no exact science right. So I'm just gonna mark it and once I mark the first one I need to count over eight which includes that one. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So you kinda see that it's a little, it feels a little off. So I'm going to move over one here and on this side I'm gonna move one as well. One over closer to the middle. So it's just a matter of making sure that that works. Also you're going to want to make sure that when this is sitting here you're leaning it up that it is sitting square to the box as well and that looks pretty close to me. So what I want to do is that I wanna keep moving with this color so I'm gonna turn around and when I get to this stitch here I'm going to skip it plus the other eight or other seven so there's a total of eight and I'm gonna chain eight and make that space and then when I come around the next time we're gonna fill that in so it leaves the opening. So turn it around to the back side and let's uh, take this off and we're going to begin the next round. So I'm technically on round number 28 so I'm just gonna start up, put your half double crochet in that you know it and you're gonna continue to half double crochet and when you get around to the front side of this then what's gonna happen is that you are going to skip the ones that are marked. So you stop with the one before chain eight and then go to the one after that and then start half double crocheting around. So please do this, this is round number 28. So moving on now to round number 29. So you can see that I created the space. So this uh, 29 is the last time for the reindeer people and we will uh, be, I'll be talking to you about that. So you're just gonna um, half double crochet around. In that chain eight space just put in eight half double crochets around the chain itself and that will center itself and then meet me back at the end of this round and then reindeer people will talk and then everybody for elf and Santa will keep on moving along in today's tutorial. Okay so let's talk where we are. I just finished off round number 29. For my friends going on for the reindeer you are going to follow the set of instructions. I'm not gonna do this one with you on camera because it's pretty straightforward. You are going to do from this point forward another five rounds using the brown color or whatever color you decided for your reindeer. So one, two, three, four, and five. You are then going to do three rounds of the green and the three rounds of green once that's done you are going to then do the layers of well the rounds of brown in order to get to the bottom of the box. Once you're at the bottom of the box you're done. So that's actually pretty straightforward. 
For those moving on to the elf and the Santa, we actually have to get a little bit further down and then we're gonna start a neckline of their outfit. It could be red, it could be uh, green, it could be any color that you wished and that's what we're gonna talk about next. So let's talk about elf and Santa and reindeer people. We'll see you again next time and just keep on circling until you're at the base. So I've already done the elf here. So right where we're sitting right now, we have to do one, two and three more rounds of the skin tone color. We're then going to do the layering of this and it's exactly done the same way with here. So we're going to turn to the wrong side, use the back loop and circle around and then in the same round we're gonna come up and we're gonna start the outfit once again and then the outfit is done as soon as it hits the base of the box. So what we need to do is uh, from here three more rounds of just half double crochets around and then I'll meet you back up and we'll do the fluffy area then which will be next at that point. So three more rounds please and I'll see you back here in just a moment. Okay, so now I have what appears to be four rows. So this row, two, three and four. So I told you it was three after we had done this main section. So now I want to attach to the back middle. So if we know that this is the front, we can tell by the opening. So we're going to do what we did before but this time it's to a different section and just creating a slip knot. And we're going to go on this side here to go onto the back section. So we're on the wrong side by doing this and we're gonna go to the back loop only. And then we'll use the other loop then in the future to attach then Santa Claus's color for his outfit or it could be elf or any other colors that you're doing. So just chain two after you do that and just double crochet in the same one. And in the back loop only going around, I need you to now uh, do a double crochet like you had done before and I'll see you at the end of this round. So I've just come all the way back around, just slip stitch to the top of the first double crochet that you started with. Everything is pretty easy hidden. Let's uh, cut this yarn, let's uh, fasten it off and then we're going to start with the body color which will be the outfit color of the character you're making. So let's start with the outfit color. So we're gonna still continue on the wrong side just for one round and we're going to grab the remaining of the loops uh, that are there. Okay, so we're gonna go into what is called as a front loop. So we're just gonna pick it off and attach and chain one and you're going to half double crochet on the remaining front loops all the way around. At the end of this round we're going to turn the work completely and then we'll be working on the right side again for the remaining of this and then you'll finish off at the base of your tissue box. So I'll see you at the end of this round. So I've just come all the way around and I'm just going to slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet. So now we're going to turn our work completely and then work on the right side which is this side, the good side. And you're going to stop when you get to the base of the box. Just for the record, my elf that I did, it's this row plus five more but you could be different. Make sure that you are measuring it to the box and so it doesn't bunch up. So it just wants to rest nicely onto a surface. So you're just gonna chain up one, one half double crochet in each round and continue to do the rounds until it's at the base of the box. So this were, is where I'm going to leave you today and when I uh, see you next time, we'll carry on with our parts of the puzzle and we'll be working away. So I'm doing all three at the same time. It's easier to remember the pattern and I also can cross compare at the same time. So I'll see you next time and have a good day.